did you know that you can get a secret charm by introducing a code in the main menu? All you have to do is have either Pyramid Head or Cheryl selected. Go back to the main menu and introduce the code that appears on the screen depending on your platform. And if you did it successfully, you will hear this. That means you unlocked the Vic Viper charm. And this entire easter egg is a reference to the Konami code, one of the most popular cheat codes in video game history that originated in the game Gradius, where this spaceship comes from. And this is not the only easter egg related charm that you can get. If you purchase any of the two characters from the Sadako Rising DLC, you will get a secret intro cinematic that showcases the cursed videotape of Ringu. And once finished, you will earn the Wrathful Well charm. This is probably the creepiest easter egg in the game as it took a lot of people by surprise. It's no secret that some of the characters in the game are able to speak, like the Trickster, Ash Williams, Pinhead, all of the Resident Evil cast and some of the newest survivors. But did you know that some characters have secret voice lines that only happen under certain conditions? For example, if you take too long to start a match with Ash Williams, he might get tired and say this. Are we gonna be here all day? And it also changes if you have the Ashy Slashy cosmetic equipped. Any minute now. If you play as the Nemesis, and you interact with a STARS member like Jill, Chris or Rebecca by taking them out of lockers or by memento mooring them, Nemesis will scream his only iconic line. <laughs> and if you play as Wesker against Chris Redfield, he will say secret voice lines when interacting with Chris, like hooking him Farewell, old friend. Getting stunned. This isn't over, Chris. Or performing a mori. Time to die, Chris. Have you ever stopped in order to admire the detail that the artist and behavior put in their maps? I think one of the most detailed spots I have ever seen is from the school merchant map, as there are a lot of details and secrets on it. For example, Something I don't see many players talk about is how on her operation table you can find two prototype weapons that she was working on, which could potentially become cosmetics in the future, like a hooked spike or the giant drill. Another detail that a lot of people don't notice while playing is that some of the mannequins are actually not fully mannequins, but some of the victims of School Merchant. You can notice this when you attack them, as the mannequins will sound plastic, but the real victims sound squishy. One of them even has a modeled mouth when you look at the files of the game. There are a lot of hidden details around her base that showcase some of her pastimes while she is not hunting for survivors. Perhaps the most funny one is a laptop with an anime episode paused suggesting that she watches her anime after a hard trial. But this raises a very interesting question. Is there an actual internet connection in the Entity's realm? After all, there seems to be electricity and some type of radio waves that work. In fact, even Carlos is able to somehow talk with another person in the Entity's realm, as we can see him nodding to something in the radio he hears. So can they contact the real world via these means? And why can they access the internet inside the entity's realm? Well, this is because the school merchant and Carlos connection is encrypted and they are able to bypass the firewall of the entity thanks to NordVPN, the partners of today's video. Now you might be thinking, as a DVD player, why would I need a VPN? Well, that's the same thought that a lot of DVD streamers had before they got DDoSed by some loser 
that had a lot of time in their hands. Well, with NordVPN, you have your connection encrypted in order to protect your data from being stolen by sore losers. Or how about content creators getting hacked by crypto scammers? Well, NordVPN also offers a threat protection feature to prevent phishing attempts. And not only does NordVPN provide you with passive benefits, you can also get active benefits too. For example, you can change your location in real time to any of the multiple servers all around the world that NordVPN offers, and this way you can access blocked or censored websites or watch shows and movies that are exclusive to other countries. And soon, it's summertime. Most of you will probably take a vacation somewhere, but plane tickets can be very costly. Well, with NordVPN, you can change your location to a different country and potentially get cheaper plane tickets. If you travel a lot, you will know that a VPN is basically a necessity. So if you're interested in getting NordVPN, then get a two-year plan with one additional month for free by using my personal link in the description down below. It's completely risk-free, and if you end up not satisfied with the product, NordVPN also offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. Huge thanks to NordVPN for making this video possible. Now let me ask you something. Where would you go in the Entities Realm if you wanted to take a vacation? Well, I hope you chose Ormond, because out of all the realms in the fog, this is the only one that the entity rates a 10 out of 10 would recommend. This is a really fun easter egg that most players would never find, but too bad this is not true, because the place is cold and it's filled with killers and monsters. But this is not the only text-based easter egg left by the devs. In fact, there is a very high chance you have seen this easter egg very close to you while playing, but never took the moment to appreciate the details. Some newspapers that you can find as random props all around the map were printed by Behavior Times, and they feature a headline that says Anxiety Anxiety along with an image of the Wraith. Another newspaper published by Behavior Times has a news headline that says The Killer Strikes Again. And finally, there is a newspaper with a very weird headline talking about miniature horses, and it also features the DVD logo as well as Meg Thomas inside a locker, and this is one of the oldest easter eggs in the game. Another newspaper related easter egg can be found inside the caravan of the clown, where you can find an apparent crime that was done in the 20th of April, a date that is sacred for a lot of stoners and Call of Duty enthusiasts. Now, whether you consider this a stretch to make the video runtime longer, I'll let you decide, but I think having this date be related to the clown, a character that is constantly coughing, and knowing that behavior likes to hide easter eggs in random text around the map, I think it's fair to say that the clown enjoys some of that entity lettuce. But perhaps the most insane hidden message in the video is the secret dev message in the map of the game, not only because it was hidden in plain sight, but also because this easter egg has been removed from the game with the graphical update of the game. In the original version of the map, before the visual rework, you could find caution stickers applied to electronic appliances in the wall. Well, if you take a look and read the text on this sticker, even though it's in really low quality, you can read this secret message that an artist left for players to discover. Who takes the time to read this is a real deal hardcore player or have a lot of time to spend. I can't believe the devs are calling me out on my lack of meaningful things on life. If you are a fan of puzzle easter eggs, then you are going to love this one. Have you ever wondered why sometimes, in the Silent Hill map, you can hear the giant clock ringing? This is because one of the generators from the easter egg has been completed. So if you want to see the secret that this map contains, you have to repair two generators in the correct order. 
the first generator can be found in the chemistry lab, which contains a periodic table as well as a drop down to one of the exit gates. Once you repair this generator, the clock handles will move to 12 o'clock. And a golden medallion will appear on the left side. The second generator that you have to repair is the one in the music room, which is the room with the piano. Once you repair that generator, the clock will be set on 5 o'clock. And a silver medallion will appear on the right. When you have these two medallions, all you have to do is trigger the endgame collapse and a secret room will open in the middle of the clock tower, including a special chest. You are probably familiar with the robot called the Singularity, but did you know that its full name is called Hox? A713. Hux is the short name of the company Huxley, which manufactured it, and I originally thought that the numbers were placed there at random, but actually the name could be an easter egg referencing the release date of the chapter, A7 being the 7th anniversary or even the patch number of the update, and 13 could be June 13, the official release date. But if you think the name of the singularity is just a coincidence, that's alright. However, what is not a coincidence is the next easter egg found in the Deadslinger's weapon serial number. According to the manufacturing engravings, the weapon is a Costin and Waste Model 48, which is a fictional firearm brand. However, underneath the brand, we have a serial number which says this is number 06-14-2016, and this number is an obvious date. More specifically, this is actually the release date of Dead by Daylight, the 14th of June 2016. This is such a fantastic easter egg that not many people are even aware of. And if you are a fan of numerical easter eggs, this one is for you. As we all should be aware by now, the trickster is one of the most evil characters in the game, even if his visual appearance doesn't show it, and Behavior wanted to implement this even further by hiding a creepy easter egg that most people wouldn't even pay attention to, but the more you look into it, the creepier it gets. The trickster gets 44 throwing knives as his default, but why did Behavior decide specifically on this number? After all, even with precise aiming, there is no balanced reason to have 44 knives. Well, this is actually because of tetraphobia, or fear of the number 4, which is very common in East Asia. The reason why 4 is so bad in Asian culture is because it represents death, as the way you pronounce 4 sounds very close to the word death. In Japan, the number 4 is straight up the same as the word death. And as if things weren't enough for the trickster, the entity also decided to hide a creepy number in one of his charms. If you take a closer look at the special trickster charm that you could get back in the Bone Chill event, you can see that the trickster figurine is a limited edition special, and we specifically have the number 666 out of 5000. My western audience will be more familiar with this number and why it's creepy, because for those unaware, this number is known in popular media as the number of the devil. And the final easter egg related to Trickster that I wanted to show you can be found in the Trickster concert ticket that was part of the 9th rift and given to all of those that purchased it. As you can see, there is a QR code. Well, if you decide to scan this QR code with your phone 
and I will leave you some time to do so, you will see that it links to a YouTube video. That video is actually the anime trailer release of the All Kill chapter. This is honestly a really cool easter egg. The puzzle of the clock tower is not the only easter egg that the devs left in the Silent Hill map. In fact, I would go as far as to say this is the map with the most amount of references to its original media. The first reference that many people are aware of is that when you go to the bathroom located in one of the corners of the map, if you listen closely, you can hear a woman crying inside one of the stalls. This is the only instance in the entire game of another human being that is alive in the map. Well, in the original Silent Hill, on this same place, you could hear a woman crying inside the bathroom. <laughs> the next easter egg that many players have probably already seen is the jump scare in the locker room. Whenever you go inside the locker room as a survivor, there is a chance that a jump scare will play on one of the lockers from the left side. Along with this jump scare, you can find a locker that seems to be alive and bleeding inside. This is again a direct reference to Silent Hill 1. And there are many more references, like the dog newspaper inside a table, the seal of Metatron in the courtyard, or the sirens at the start. But these two easter eggs that I mentioned are the most prominent. This is not the only video game reference that Dead by Daylight has, as the RPD is also filled completely with details related to the original Raccoon City police station. But the coolest one by far, in my opinion, and the one that not many players might be able to hear due to the chaotic nature of the game is that inside any of the rooms that had a typewriter in the Resident Evil 2 game actually feature a special music that you can only hear as a survivor and outside of the terror radius. The devs made an entire music track as an easter egg just to reference the original games. And by the way, the only exception to this is the main room of the RPD, as there is a typewriter here, but the music doesn't play. The artist, as her name implies, is an artist, and before she was even revealed as a character, Behavior made an RRG where they teased the new chapter by showing creepy paintings that seem to represent the entity's realm. The cool thing is that, at the top of the tower in the Ivy of Crows, you can find painting canvases and one of them features one of the paintings that she drew as part of the teasers for her own chapter. Now, one moment of silence for this easter egg, because it is sadly no longer in the game. In the Hawkins map, before it was removed by Netflix, Behavior added a secret room behind one of the doors that only spawned if the basement generated in the other side of the map, and this room was only accessible with the nurse. Once you were inside, you could see three scientists in the floor with a beer container next to them, as well as a board that contains the molecular component of polyester, which is a reference to Polly Esther, a fog whisperer that has been making DVD videos since 2016 and is one of the main people that searches for the legendary golden toolboxes in each update. In fact, this room was a clue as to how to discover the golden toolbox located in the Hawkins map, 
as it also had a line that said end game collapse as well as the gold chemical formula which ended up helping solve the mystery of Hawking's. So I mentioned golden toolboxes, but what are those? The golden toolboxes are the most famous easter eggs in Dead by Daylight, introduced for the first time way back in 2016 on Haddon Field. Since then, easter egg hunters have been searching for a golden toolbox on the various maps, and according to the developers, each realm contains one golden toolbox, and sometimes they are incredibly difficult to find. The toolbox from the Macmillan estate can only be found in the groaning storehouse, behind some boxes. It's pretty easy to see once you know it's there. As of right now, nobody knows the location of the golden toolbox in Auto Haven. However, before the Gas Haven rework, you could find it in between the giant car walls. The golden toolbox of Coldwind is pretty easy to find, as it's on the top floor of the barn in the fractured co-shed map. The Asylum golden toolbox is located in the wheels of the clown's caravan, and it's easier to see as a survivor as it's closer to the floor. To this day, Nobody has found the golden toolbox of Haddonfield, however, before its rework, it was one of the easiest ones to find, as it was located underneath a table in the outside. The Larry's golden toolbox is kinda hard to see, as it's located under the ceiling tile next to the windows in the library. Before its visual rework, however, the golden toolbox was located in the outside walls of Larry's and was only visible through a hole. The Red Forest Realm has the easiest golden toolboxes ever, as it's the only one that can be found in two maps at the same time. The golden toolbox is at the top of the shack building, and before the visual rework, you could find it in the middle of the stone tiles buried under the ground. The golden toolbox of the swamp can be located under the stairs of the Pale Bros, and this location will probably change with the upcoming visual rework. Way back when the map first came out, the golden toolbox was located randomly inside a broken boat tile. The Batham toolbox can be found inside a phone booth and it's one of the easiest ones to find, however, it only spawns in the Batham Preschool version 1. It does not appear in any of the other variants of this map. The toolbox in the game map can only be seen with a survivor, as it's located under a bed in the main room of Amanda and you need a very low camera angle to see it. Yamaoka Estate has its golden toolbox located in the hole of the ceiling in the main hall and it can be difficult to see due to the bright light. To this day, nobody knows the location of the Ormond Golden Toolbox post the visual reward, because before it was located inside a blocked room and you could see it through a crack or when you teleported with the nurse. The Golden Toolbox in Dead Dog Saloon is actually very interesting, as it only appears at the start of the match inside the water tower, and it will slowly rise up and then go back down until it's no longer visible. It took the community almost two years in order to find this golden toolbox. You can only find the golden toolbox in the east wing version of the RPD, as it will spawn in the blocked west wing part of the map out of bounds. The Ivy of Crows has another very easy toolbox, as it can be seen on top of the brick wall on the second floor of the tower. It's practically not hidden at all. The Garden of Joy map is the only one that has a chance of not spawning the golden toolbox at all, as it spawns on top of the treehouse that sometimes is replaced by a crashed train. The decimated Borgo map has a slightly hidden golden toolbox, as you can find it on the top of the shack again, 
However, due to the colors of the map, it can be fine to see. And finally, and by far the hardest one, the golden toolbox in Midwich is found via a very specific method. First of all, you have to start the endgame collapse, and second of all, you need to down a survivor in order to slow down the endgame collapse timer. Once you wait at almost the end, you will see the golden toolbox emerge from inside a mid mound in the chemistry lab. It took the community two years in order to find this golden toolbox, making it one of the hardest toolboxes in the entire game to see. Also, the location of this golden toolbox is the same one as the location of the golden medallion in the original Silent Hill game. As you can see, some golden toolboxes are extremely hard to find or they require very specific conditions to be met. For that reason, it's normal that nobody has found the Haddonfield, Ormond, Autohaven or Toba landing ones. But did you know that the golden toolboxes are not the only easter eggs that you can find in various maps? Behavior has been hiding secret teddy bears around some of the new reworked maps, potentially in reference to Naughty Bear, a video game that Behavior made back in the past and that will actually be featured soon in Dead by Daylight as a skin for the Trapper. Now this of course could be just reuse of assets like the beer bottles that can be found in every map. However, unlike those bottles, Behavior made a post back on Twitter where they asked where you could find these bears in the realms. And also, this bear was sold in the official Dead by Daylight merchandise store. So maybe there is something more to these bears that most players are unaware of. And now this cheesy easter egg is for the OGs. Have you ever wondered why in the old version of Dead by Daylight, the maps were filled with cheese crates? I am not joking. Any veteran that remembers playing this game back in the old days will remember that maps like Macmillan were filled with sausage and cheese crates everywhere. Well, it turns out that this was an inside joke easter egg by behavior themselves, as on the first ever livestream they used a cheese image as a backdrop, and also in later streams one of the artists even designed an iridescent cheese add-on as an icon for Ash the creative director of Dead by Daylight. Exactly the same, so we need some cheese. Uh, Clearly. Yes. <laughs> well, that's, that's uh, you, get. The, you get a new... Uh, no, no, I'm super happy with that. There's a, a new no, add-on. I, I see, which is extremely... You, and, and it's funny because it's one of those add-ons you can actually add to anything. Oh, yeah? Cool. Yeah. Mm. That's Attached exciting. to any object. Well, if you ever wondered why, now you have the answer. But the cheese is not the only inside joke that the devs have in the game. In fact, there are many, many more, as various developers had fun leaving their names in the game. For example, Alex Toolbox, an item dedicated to sabotaging hooks, is named after Alex Lin, the product manager at Behavior, and also the likeness of Jake Park, as well as the voice of the doctor. And this item was named after Alex because it was his favorite item to use. And have you ever wondered who are the survivors that left behind the general perks like Dark Sense, Kindred or Lightweight? Well, all of those secret survivors are named after someone from Behavior. Aizeyu, the survivor from Plunder's Instinct, was the number one survivor with the most amount of points in the beta leaderboard who even won an official DVD poster thanks to this feat. Andy, from the small game perk, seems to be Andy Dupe, PR of behavior. Clyde, from the no one left behind perk, who now goes by the name Andre and who is also a regional lead community manager. Murph, from the dark sense perk, seems to be this Murph I found on Twitter, since he's also followed by Matthew Cote and he is indeed a developer at Behavior. Nikki from the Hope perk is Nikki Wright, the lead customer support at Behavior who also has a dedicated video in the Behavior channel. And finally, Sujan from the Kindred perk who
who is a security analyst at Behavior and dear god almighty, that's a lot of hours in Dead by Daylight. It's interesting how they have so many hours yet they only have 6 achievements unlocked, so this is definitely a Behavior account. Sadly, I was not able to find anyone by the name of Dylan, Sassy or Donna, so either they no longer work at Behavior or they go by other names. But interestingly enough, Behavior employees are not the only things referenced in flavor text, as you can find many easter eggs on various items and cosmetic descriptions. For example, the previously mentioned Plunder's Instinct perk description is a direct reference to one of the best SpongeBob episodes. And another cool reference can be found in the Dwight outfit called Snake All Merchant, which directly references a character from Red Dead Redemption, Nigel West Dickens. So, uh, plain view, do you suffer from rheumatism, lumbago, acute chronic sciatic, uh, neurologic or inflammatory pain? And finally, a reference that most players probably don't even know is that a content creator called Hybrid Panda is referenced on a hillbilly cosmetic called Barb Shotgun, which has a description that says, come here my little sausage, which is a phrase that Hybrid Panda says a lot on his gameplay videos. Hello there Jeffrey, hello there you little sausage. And just like Michael Myers, I decided to save the best for last. On the 6th anniversary, during the Masquerade event, every time you started a new match, you could see one of the messages from a random developer at Dead by Daylight in order to make this event more memorable. Some of the messages were random fun facts, others were the experiences of the developers, but one message stood above all, a message by Daniel a game programmer, where instead of a funny meme or fact, he told a random story about Jonah Vasquez. Jonah went straight to the basement chest in order to search for clues, and as he opened it, he got a spine chill. The chest contained a torn note inside, with a sequence scribbled on it. Now if you are familiar with the lore of Jonah, you would know that numbers are his passion and he has been chased by weird codes through all of his life. To find another code, but this time in the Entity's realm, was something else. This was an IRG that the developers wanted the community to solve. Some people thought that it was a combination of some sorts, similar to the Konami code easter egg. Others thought that this was a code that could unlock a secret outfit in the cosmetic store. However, a smart member of the community believed that this was an encoded message, and so they started to crack the code with any encoding service they could find. As it turns out, they were correct, as it was found that this message was encoded in hexadecimal, and when it was run through a hexadecimal translator, all you got was this random string of letters and numbers. At first, Nobody knew what this random mix of letters was. It seemed like the mystery would end here, as there was no lead anymore. However, a keen eye discovered that this was very similar to how YouTube video links are saved. And so, that was when they decided to paste this string of letters and numbers at the end of an empty YouTube link. And as it turns out, this was it the biggest easter egg in Dead by Daylight that forever changed the game. I will play this video now. 